welcome. You're tuning in to Calligraphy Unscripted. I'm Christy Tony, a calligraphy expert with 16 years of experience. And in this podcast, you can expect storytelling, actionable tips, and mindset hacks to help you along in this discipline. So let's just jump right in and ink up. Hello, and welcome to or welcome back to Calligraphy Unscripted. I am proud to say that this is episode number 10. I just read that 90% of podcasters quit before they reach episode three. The rest of the people that stick with it will quit after 20 episodes. So unbelievably, all I have to do is make 21 episodes and I'll be in the top 1% of podcasters. How amazing does that sound? Now, this work is definitely not for the faint of heart, but it does help that I'm a chatty Kathy, or should I say a chatty Christy? Now, on today's show, I want to discuss something crucial, self-critiquing your own work. Now, that's an art form within an art form, and trust me, it's not as scary as it sounds. In fact, it's incredibly liberating. Now, it'll give you the confidence that you are putting your best foot forward as far as your work is concerned, but it will heavily depend on how skilled you are at observing letters and letter forms. Now, your creative eye will develop over time, and the way I know that this is true is because things that looked just fine to me years ago that were released to clients would require a lot more refining by me today. That's just goes without saying. Now, the ability to look at your work objectively is a powerful tool. And if you are happy with your work year after year after year, or if you can look back on your work from years ago and think it's just fine, then you may be a bit stagnant because you should always be dissatisfied with your work from years ago. Now, the ability to look at your work objectively, again, is a powerful tool. Now, taking a photo of your work will look entirely different on a phone screen than it does in person. For me, it's as if, you know, my iPhone dons magic glasses and is showing me all the little imperfections and deviations I hadn't noticed before. Now, if you haven't tried this method of observing your work, please do. It's a real eye opener. Okay, now I have five best practices that I've honed over my years as a calligrapher, and they've made all the difference in elevating my work, or should I say made the difference in what I feel comfortable releasing. Now, I also want to add the disclaimer that as the years have gone on, I have identified the kind of projects that will require a ton of refining. So you know, it becomes fruitless to act as if I'm going to just get certain projects done in one or two passes. Some projects take a while to get the way you want them to look. Okay, now the first best practice, number one, pertains to faux calligraphy. Now, faux calligraphy is super popular. We have to talk about it. Um, What can make faux calligraphy look amateurish or rushed is inconsistent thicknesses. There's no reason for us to act like all faux calligraphy is related or created equally. It is not. It's probably one of the first things that a newer calligrapher or newer hand letterer is going to learn. And it does take a while to kind of find your groove, to find your own style, and to really make these letters or or really craft these letters in a way that you can't always tell that they were drawn out. Now, a photo will make the occurrences of inconsistent thicknesses very clear, okay? Um, It's also a bit of an optical illusion when you're doing sign work that'll be judged from a distance. Now, the thickness on the letters should be a little thicker than normal in order to be noticed. A lot of times, you can add a very thin layer of thickness onto your letter, and then when you walk away from it, it can still look like a monoline letter because the thickness is just not exaggerated enough to be noticed. 
not from a distance, not at a larger scale. Okay, so smaller signs, this is not, it's not so much of a difference. You won't really be able to tell that, not on smaller signs. I'm talking five by seven, eight by 10, but once you start getting larger, like 24, 36, things like that. Now, if you're struggling with the thickness of your strokes, unless you have a style that requires an exaggerated or dramatic thicknesses, I would start as thin as possible and then refine and sculpt each letter, adding thickness as you go along. That is always easier than laying down a very thick and exaggerated letter, not doing it consistently throughout the word, and then having to go back with a Q-tip and actually change and refine the thicknesses. That's always a pain. So you want to just start as thin as possible as far as your thickness and then work your way up. And it's also going to be important as long as you are refining your work to make sure that your thicknesses are not being extended too far. The break from thick to thin should be abrupt and it should be clean. And that is something that you should look at all the time. That's something that I look at all the time. And when you take a picture of it, you will see immediately if you've gone too far with some of these letters. And then that's the time when you come in with a Q-tip and you have some remover alcohol for Sharpie, paint pen, terpenoid for a deco color, paint pen, and really refine and sculpt that letter. Okay, so that's the first best practice. Second, number two, pertains to pointed pen work. Now, particularly when you're working on long text, I think that it's easier to be happier with your envelopes than it is to be happier with your long text work. Because it's so much and it's a larger footprint. And I think that it kind of exposes your technique and how good of a grasp you have on your fundamentals. So when you're working on long text, you should examine your consistency. Now notice the long text work that we all admire from all of our favorite calligraphers. The ones that typically stand out appear to really adhere to a consistent line. Either one that is strictly obeying a straight baseline or even, even a bouncy modern style will be consistently bouncy, if that makes sense. Okay, now the space between the lines of type is consistent on the pieces that we admire. And if there are flourished letters, there appears to be a rhythm with those oval based curls. It's just like a, a, it's almost like a song. So in comparison to those texts that we like, how does our long text appear? Check the letter spacing, the space between your letters, line spacing, the space between your lines of type and the oval work. I mean, if we're being honest with ourselves, it can be kind of a mess. Lots of times we don't warm up our hands, we don't warm up our wrists for finger movement, wrist movement, shoulder movement, elbow movement, none of it. We're just diving in because we're calligraphers, right? We've been doing this for years. Even the most seasoned calligrapher needs to be warmed up in order to affect a satisfying long text. There's no way around that. I'm just being honest and I include my own work in this critique. It can happen to all of us, no matter how carefully we feel like we are crafting letters. And I only have one remedy for this when you discover something that you don't like, or if you discover that this footprint of five, six, seven, eight lines of type is not as uniform or pleasing aesthetically as you want it to be, okay? Now there are no shortcuts. You simply go back to the basics and do some fundamental drills. I'm talking ovals, I'm talking upstrokes, I'm talking downstrokes. I'm talking about doing lowercase letters, maybe the entire alphabet, just so you can kind of tighten up the space between your letters? How do they look? How are you connecting these letters? What are you doing? So it's simply practice, practice, and after that, more practice. 
Sorry, that wasn't a more of a, a hack, but <laughs> that's the only time that I'm really happier with how my long texts look if I've actually put in the work. Okay, number three. Number three pertains to hand lettering. Okay, so moving away from scripts for a moment and thinking about serifs, sans serifs, etc. Um, it's a bit unconventional and not always possible depending on how a sign is constructed. But try writing or crafting this kind of lettering upside down. Now, I know it sounds insane, but an upside down view will turn those letters into abstract shapes versus a letter that I am accustomed to seeing over and over and over again. Okay, so this drill or exercise helps me focus more on consistency and form. Whenever you see a welcome sign of mine, that begins with welcome to our wedding or welcome to the wedding of, and it's in a serif or even a sans serif style, but definitely if it's in a serif style. I more often than not did that part with the mirror or the chalkboard or whatever the surface was upside down. And honestly, all I do when it's the, the right side up I just go ahead and I do a light sketch with maybe a chalk marker. That's all I need. Then I'll flip it over and then I'll just start crafting the letter with a paint pen. And it makes all the difference in the world. Every imperfection is so much more obvious when you are actually just creating these as abstract shapes. So that is that is a hack. And I think that that is something that uh, should be tried, should be attempted just to see how you feel. See if it, see if it feels good. Number four, aim for your personal standard. This is a big one. It's not about perfection, but it's about setting a standard for your work that makes you proud. If there are errors that only you notice, weigh them against your standards. Now, not every minor flaw requires correction or if I'm being honest, can even be corrected, depending on the volume of signs that you're delivering. But knowing your own standards can help you decide. Now, some of my colleagues listening to this podcast, who I've worked with for a while now, will know that my advertising background as a print production manager has me always referring to things that we all fuss over as consumer non-noticeables. <laughs> And so you'll have to decide for yourself what gets tossed into the bin of a consumer non-noticeable and something that you're just not going to be able to live with. I always think about the pictures. I think about the ph photographers taking pictures of these materials and I am going to die if there is a certain thing that I didn't change. And it's all different for all of us. So I can't tell you what must be changed. That's up to you. But I will say that my standards in most cases are higher than my clients or a lay person who complains that they can't even understand their own handwriting. Of course, there will be a lower bar that's acceptable for that person, but that doesn't mean that you shouldn't continuously work on your craft. That is going to be a years long pursuit and it will be an unending pursuit that you have. Okay, number five, give your eyes a rest. Don't forget to revisit your work after a day or two if you have this luxury, okay? Fresh eyes, even more so than an iPhone photo, can make a huge difference in identifying areas of improvement for your work. Okay, so these best practices are just guidelines. Remember, we're artists. Rules can be bent and sometimes even broken. But understanding the basic best practices will make you better equipped to experiment and find your unique style, okay? Now, also, if you're looking to dive even deeper onto this topic, I do have a resource on, imp on improving your calligraphy signage, and I will pop a link to it in the show notes. Now, this can be especially helpful if you're looking to further refine your work for clients. Maybe you have been kind of just phoning in your, your designs. Maybe you want to take a second look at them. 
make them a little better. Now, I hope you enjoyed this 10th episode and I will be back next week. Bye guys. I hope you enjoyed the episode and I appreciate you listening. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Check out some of my problem solving content in the show notes and I'd love to connect with you on socials. I can be found on Patreon, Instagram, TikTok, and YouTube under Calligraphy by CT. Until next time.